Squid! Wait! How's it going, Squid Nation? It's your boy! And today we're back again with more look at some content. Today we're actually gonna be talking about uh, the backstory of both Jake Kim and Samuel Sale. Now, the reason why I chose both these guys because um, not because both their again their backstories intertwine with each other, but they're actually freaking. Brothers. Kind of fucked up with the little pe big piece of evidence here. Yeah, Samuel is not Gabriel's like you know second son or anything. I know Gabriel has a second son, but it isn't Samuel. I uh, just wanted to clear that. So if you ever, if you again, if you in the video, if I say that, oh Samuel, you know, you know Jake brothers or Samuel, you know Gabriel has a kid, which is Samuel. Uh, just forget, forget that. You know what I'm saying? I was going to probably just re reshoot this whole fucking video again, but again. Uh, I, I'm not trying. I'm not trying to deal through that. Yep, both of them. They're freaking biological brothers for some crazy ass reason. Oh my god. Jesus Christ, no wonder these motherfuckers are beefing both of you. Jesus Christ. And I'm probably wondering who the fuck the father is. Well, Jake's last name is Kim, so guess who has the last name of Kim? Gaprion Kim, yep, so, uh, the man that we talked about during the pre-generation, like, um, video I talked about, yeah, as you guys know, to give you a brief backstory a little bit with summarization, Gaprion Kim forged, like, you know, saying, his crew to fight against injustice and basically revolutionize society by using nothing but his fists, and then he decided to go into politics and, you know, try to play politician, which, and again, he never got in, and he... Pretty much died shortly after that but <laughs> um but uh he left two sons well <laughs> left two sons one was jake who pretty much um pretty much inherited all of the wealth and money they came from and the other was samuel who literally got nothing from him and it's actually quite crazy because jake presents his father while samuel pretty much praises him even though one doesn't have his money and the other one does. be <laughs> it's even more fucked up because Gap Young, he was a shitty father. I'm gonna be honest, this man was a shitty bastard to, to both to both the women he slept with that conceived his child, gave birth to them, and vice versa. Like this man was I mean, let's be real. My man it was a woman womanizer. I mean, who could blame him? I mean, this man had everything. He had the money. Well, he used to have the looks. I don't know why, you know what I'm saying? He used to, you know what I'm saying? He used to look like Jake, but now let himself go, let's be real here. <laughs> he let himself mad fucking go. Like, he looks like a fat slob and shit. You know what I'm saying? But, anyways, yeah. Basically, Gapriong died, and basically the two sons came to be. One was poor as fuck, but wanted to become a gangster, while the other one was kind of mixed up in between. He wanted to, he want, he resented his father so much, he didn't want to become a gangster and vice versa. And apparently, these two just came ahead, and... Uh, actually met, um, their mentor, basically, or somewhat of a father figure to them, Sinu Han. Now, this, this, this nigga, okay, this man right here, this sexy motherfucker right here, he, uh, was the, um, the original, uh, leader of Big Deal. Now, this man, he, 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 even though he formed, like, a crew, like, you know what I'm saying, he's a gangster and shit like that, he had very great intentions, you know what I'm saying, he had very good intentions and stuff like that, you know what I mean, like, he, though he was a gangster, he had only had one major rule, he wanted to protect this one street that he always loved, and he, ever since his childhood, actually, he's been fighting, fighting the injustice on this street since he was a freaking child, and... Bro, let's be real here. Like, even though he acts like somewhat of a wimp, this man is a demon, bro. And it was shown very closely during his crazy freaking fight he had with freaking goo. Now, <laughs> I'm just trying, I'm just gonna show y'all, bro. Throughout the entirety of what of meaning of you pretty much getting to know seen seen you, bro. Bro, Sam neither Samuel nor Jake. Literally thought this man was like, you know, saying he was that he was him. All right. It was only until 
Gun and Goo stepped up to like, you know, try and forge the freaking four crews that they saw the real Sinu Han, bro. The the Sinu Han who was basically the god of combat, basically. Like this nigga turned up. He had that on-site energy. Cause he heard that Goo and Go was disturbing all the neighboring gangs in the area. And they were gonna head for big deal. And my man. My man Sinu had that had that energy, bro. That man had that fucking energy, nigga. Everybody was shocked. Everybody, even the, his own, even the whole gang members during this time, no one has seen Sinu ever get this mad serious, bro. Until today, until when Goo stepped up and be like, "Hey, we're gonna force Major Cruz." You know what I'm saying? This was when my man. Whoo! Want to tell you, Sinu had that dog in him. He had that dog in him. Like, bro, man had that on site. Like, this man said on site. On site. He was ready for him. He was ready to. He was ready, bro. Fist the cuffs and all. He he didn't even give this man the freaking chance. Man, even ghoul like shot. Like, hey, yo, chill, man. Hey, yo. My God. And my man. And my man still. And my man said he still got a hundred deadly moves. Sir, excuse me. My man was, like, he was ready. He was ready. Relentless. Keep my everybody mad shot. Gun is just straight chilling. My man's like, yo, damn, shit. My man, my man's stronger than anything. Shit. The scars, the scars don't lie. The scars don't, definitely don't freaking lie. But, of course, Sinu was about to get his shit ran from Goo because, bro, I told y'all from Jump, if you read, if you guys watched my video on Goo, Gun and Goo's backstory, especially with Goo, if Goo ever holds something that was, that felt like a sword to him, a literal sword to him, it don't even matter if it was like a bat, like a freaking, like, a messed up, like, something, if it felt like something, like, was a sword to him or anything, this man was gonna come out with some type of freaking crazy ass energy and this man sinu he was he was going all out bro he wanted to fuck him up but this man goo was just just he, he was just hanging in there man like man literally poked his freaking throat and all and my man's like mm, this chopstick little dull you know too full too too dull in fact right my man's contemplating my man soon trying to go at but like i said this man goo is not he is not freaking worried because, like I said again, if he feels like there's a there's like a sword, if it feels like a sword to him in his hand, he's ready. Like he's just gonna go crazy with it. He gonna go crazy. He he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna pull a freaking Zenetsu. He's gonna pull a freaking Zoro, bro. Like a freaking Zoro, bro. Like this man was just out there, bro. And he's just going about with freaking chopsticks, bro. Freaking chopsticks, my nigga. My man was getting the shit done out of him. And he was about to freaking die right then and there. But thankfully, Jake and Samuel, both of them took the last hit and protected my man Sinu. <sighs> Sinu was decommissioned, and even though that Goo was mad pissed because he literally got shit rocked by Sinu in the first freaking half, Gun saw potential and big deal. So they gave him an ultimatum. Y'all will give us like 5 million won or some like a shit ton of won, basically, which is, you know, 100,000, 100 million US dollars, some bullshit crap, right? Give me, give us some, you know, some good money, like five million won or some, or else we'll come back and, of course, Goo or me, definitely me, Gun, will finish your fucking job, right? And, you know, that was the freaking ultimatum and shit like that. Jake wasn't really down with this whole shit, because he, he, he was, he was opting out. He was about to opt out. So, and with Sino out of commission, Samuel took in the reins. He was like, yo, I got you, all right? I got you, all right? I can make that five, five million one easy. I got you. And this is where Big Deal pretty much started to get into the illegal activities. The illegal activities that pretty much, um, if you guys don't know, which pretty much started, that pretty much would affect later on 
with Daniel and many other of his friends, you know, with the scams, the, you know what I'm saying, all this other crazy shit with all gambling situations, all that. that. All of that was pretty much like, pretty much all, not only just Samuel's, but also Jake's later on, Bob. We'll get to Jake later, right? So Samuel was taking the reins. He was taking the big bucks. He was taking the money, right? And... Jake was trying to have this, was trying to recollect, you know what I'm saying? He was just like, you know what I'm saying? This is gang shame for me, you know what I'm saying? And my man Sinu, he's like, yo, bro, look, man. Like, even though I'm fucking retired, because Sinu, he realized that he can't, he can't fucking deal with this shit. You know what I'm saying? He's, he, he said, yo, I'm, I'm going to retire soon. Because they was pretty much forcing Sinu to retire, because you know what I'm saying? Like I said, Sinu was taking hella care for all of them. And it was like the only way to pay him back, you know, like, you know what I'm saying? Give him like retirement. Don't worry, we'll take care of the big deal for you. And Blase Blase. But the thing is, uh, Sinu was more lean to Jake than to Samuel. Because Sinu saw the demon inside Samuel, okay? The demon inside Samuel was crazy. Jake, on the other hand, he was good in nature. And Jake, this is when Jake fairly finally figured out that even though that Gabriel, his father, was a piece of shit and a fucked up father... He, he he was a noble gangster, you know what I'm saying? He, he, he was a man with noble intentions, you know what I'm saying? He was a guy that if any time injustice played out, he was going to lay some shit to rest, you know what I'm saying? He was about to, you know, give, give him the fists. Give him the fist of cuffs, okay? He didn't, he, he didn't let no injustice shit slide. So while Samuel was still in the reins, keep in mind, he was the leader, right? This is where Jake come in and he was like, hey, yo, my nigga. Let's square the fuck up right now. Let's square the fuck up, bro. <laughs> you know? It was during this fight where Jake pretty much also heard the revelation that Samuel was indeed, you know, Gabriel's second son. Again, not really about the whole second son shit. No, about the fact that basically Samuel despised Jake for, ha for the reason that Gabriel was like, you know what I'm saying, his real fucking son. Because Samuel really wanted Gabriel to be his actual father and vice versa and blase blase. His actual biological father. The the actual father is just, you know, the it, it's he's, he's nothing to write home about. But anyway, continue. Or how many this man had. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because Gabriel, it, it's determined, it's believed that Gabriel had other children. So, but again, we'll get to that. We'll cross that bridge when we get to that. But basically... Like, these two were fighting against each other. This man, Samuel, just laying it, laying some heavy shit, bro. Like, saying, like, you, you, you resent your fucking father, but you got to be his real fucking son. You had everything. You had the money. You had the power. You had everything, nigga. And my man, Gun, he's, like, out here, like, bro, nah, bro. This ain't a proper matchup. You know what I'm saying? Because this nigga, he's too emotional. You know what I'm saying? He's too emotional. You need to stop. You need to stop doing it. You know what I'm saying? And my man Samuel, he's just raging. He's like, you got you got to be his real son. I couldn't be his real fucking goddamn son. God damn it. At this moment that Jake actually used, like, you know what I'm saying, while he's still, you know, while Samuel was still freaking emotional, Jake pretty much used his wits and pretty much, you know what I'm saying, put him out of his misery, put him in a choke lock, you know what I'm saying, and, you know, pretty much knock him out and all of that. And after he was laid to waste... Now it was Gunn who basically wanted to be like, now that was a good fight. <laughs> so you want to run the set, kid? <laughs> Thankfully, Sinu came in and basically stopped Jake from actually fighting Gunn because of... Gunn would have actually rocked Jake's shit. Like, I'm sorry, Jake, you're not ready for Gunn yet. But anyways, Sinu came in with, with just a funny fucking remark saying, sorry, I took a duff. <laughs> anyways, Sinu came in and it was actually shocking because... For, not just for Gun, but also for Jake too, because Sinu actually came to Jake before, you know what I'm saying, he went, you know what I'm saying, to fight Samuel, that he actually had a way to take down Gun. There was actually a way to take down Gun. But instead of actually giving him a way to take down Gun, he just blindly said, I surrender. You big deal's yours. I'll sell Bill Dick to you. Big dick. <laughs> big deal. You know what I'm saying? And this not only left. Jake Piss, but gun surprise, but he was like, alright, bet. You know what I'm saying? Let's finalize the, the reels, you know, whatever crazy craziness, right? And this left Jake so fucking pissed. He was like, nah, bro, you can't you can't sell big deal like this. You you're fucking you're fucking at your asshole. You're fucking you you literally 
you really told me to freaking fight for you. And now you're telling me that you're gonna sell big deal anyway. What the fuck? Right? So Um Like this left Jake so maculately pissed. He he and a few people that were like, you know what I'm saying, that were actually loyal to Jake. You know, cause you know, Jake took in the reins after Samuel after he beat Samuel out. Um he led a coup d'etat on Big Deal. And basically, you know what I'm saying, trying to like, you know, try to make Sinu to not, you know, say big sell big deal and whatever. And this actually led a confrontation between Sinu and Jake, bro. And of course, Sinu being him, he literally duck literally beat the brakes off of Jake and literally bodied him completely. But what even makes it even worse for my man Sinu is that throughout this entire fight and even though he literally blatantly told everybody that yo i sold big deal i sold it to everybody you know what i'm saying whatever case may vary in reality he actually sold something else himself bro he sold himself for to keep big deal safe bro damn near my man literally said bro i will sell myself if if I sell myself to you guys, I will, you know what I'm saying? Whatever y'all do to me, I do not care. Whatever you guys do to me, I am yours. I am your fucking property. And Sinu literally took that, basically. And, and he was sold, not just for one million, a billion fucking won. He was worth... A billion one, especially after what he did to Goo, bro. Jesus Christ. When Jake learned about this, he was emotionally distraught. He, he really, because keep in mind, during that moment, when during the heat of that fight, he actually hated Sinu because he thought that, you know, Sinu actually was a scumbag. But in reality, Sinu was the fucking Atachi, bro, of this fucking story. Like, he literally sold himself to protect Big Deal and everyone he cared about, including freaking Jake, man. And Jake was like, fuck it. I'll do it. I'll take over your fucking throne. But on the condition I bring your ass freaking back, bro. And that's exactly what Jake did. And this is where Jake... In this point, pretty much the villain that he was during the early... Like, you know, early on in the series, how like he was so pictured as a villain because he was literally doing everything in his power to literally bring Sinu back. The illegal brackets, the fake money, the, the counterfeits, the this gambling, the all the crap, the craziness that that um Jake did that pretty much affected Daniel and his friends and cohorts was all an effort to actually bring Sinu back to him. To, to brack up five billion won, actually, five billion won to buy Sinu back from, you know, the the people that they took him, which was actually workers, because workers actually have him. Now, as you can pretty much guess, the plan kind of took a back burner for a bit because Jake uh during uh, as i said before though that you know jake was doing all these illegal shit just to bring Sinu back it was for a noble attention again it created a massive hell for both daniel and his friends especially it was one of the major re it was one of those it was one of those situations and one of those fucked up things that actually wedged actually if you really think about it, it was one of those situations it was actually big deal and the way that they did to actually wedge the friendship between Jinho and Daniel because they were they were super cool, but Jinho was so wrapped up in the gambling, all this other craziness. Well, to be fair, I feel fucking blame Jinho because bro, you 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 should have known right from wrong at that point for like bro, you 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 kind of fucked up your own damn self, but whatever. It was kind of like big deals whole thing that they were the ones responsible basically, and Jake literally actually um uh was you know just walking back you know what i'm saying walking back after a, a good day's work you know whatever case may vary on a rainy night where he actually came head to head with bosco yes the the man of burning knuckles the one of daniel's friends he was the one that tracked the uh it was actually kind of crazy because bosco 
uh, after, before he met Jake, he actually went and took a whole, like, he took down, like, a damn, like, whole, like, business that, like, um, that had, like, the fake bank accounts and all this other craziness that, you know, Gino was in and all this other stuff craziness, right? Uh, Bosco tracked Drake down, and he was about, to, and he was fisticuffing him, but Jake, like, he beat the brakes off of Bosco, and then Gun showed up, and Gun put the brooks on fucking Jake, which is actually freaking wild, like, Gun freaking pretty much betrayed Jake on that part, um, because Gun, he was really actually trying to find someone to actually destroy the four crews, because the four crews was pretty much becoming, like, you know, whatever case may vary. Uh, was some type of secret agenda they had behind. Uh, he already found like someone to take down the four crews, and that person was, of course, Daniel. And Gun, realizing that Jake, you know, what I'm saying like Jake was, you know, big deal, whatever case may vary. He knocked the fuck out of Jake, and Jake went to prison. He went to prison, then he got out. Then now he was back on. Then, like I said, remember the time when you know he took, took the back burner. He went to prison after he got knocked the fuck out and was tried and charged, whatever case may be. But he got out, basically. He got out and and stuff like that. Now, what about Samuel? After the fight with um <clears throat> excuse me. After the fight with um Jake, uh Samuel was actually um brought in with by gun, you know what I'm saying? Because gun he saw, you know, potential in, in Samuel, so he was like, okay, bet. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You, you look, you have potential, so I'm going to train you. And though that gun trained Samuel and, you know, gave him, you know, his teachings and shit like that, he wasn't, like, because the thing about Samuel is that Samuel really wanted the appreciation from gun. But the thing is that Samuel was so fucking brutal and so fucking whacked out of his fucking goddamn mind that gun was just like, nah, bro, you, you too crazy for me. Though Goo was absolutely excited. He was like, you're my new fucking secret friend, bro. Like, <laughs> Samuel was just fucking Samuel. He was fucking out of crazy out of his mind during this time. And the two would eventually come back together. Uh, Samuel uh, would actually tell Jake that, you know what I'm saying, to go um, take down the workers and stuff like that. That was, you know, Gun's attention. That's why he sent Daniel out. Because, you know what I'm saying, because... The workers were like the main heads. They were like the, the big, the big people, you know what I'm saying, of the four crews, you know what I'm saying, that were actually like super fucking evil because hostel is hostel and big deal is, you know, big deal. And God dog, there's not really much of God dog. So workers are pretty much like the, the hedge honchos who pretty much are orchestrating everything. So it is what it is. But yeah, and also workers have seen you. So there's that. So, um... But yeah, that's pretty much it. That was pretty much the backstory for both Jake and Samuel. Um, but yeah, what did you guys think about uh, it in the comments down below? Like, comment, share this video across social media if you can. And subscribe if you're new to my channel. This is Blaze Luck signing out. Always thank you guys so much for watching. Peace!